right, so it's Monday, uh, day four, I guess, update. So we went in for my recheck this morning and my fluid levels were stable. So still really, really high. But the good news is that baby's stomach looked like it was more full today, which told us that she is likely swallowing. And that is good news because that was something that we were concerned might be contributing to my rapid increase in fluid. So that was, that was good. Yeah, so basically I'm stable-ish, stable-ish. <laughs> she is stable-ish. All of her like monitoring that we've done, she looks great. Um, her heart rate looks really good. Her movement looks really good. We do that twice a day. And I will go back for another fluid recheck on Wednesday. But right now, the plan is still a planned C-section at 37 weeks, which is two weeks from now. The only reason they would do a C-section sooner would be if my body started showing signs of distress or if her body started showing signs of distress. They have me monitored for preeclampsia right now just because my blood pressures have been a little bit high, like sporadically. So we'll see kind of what, they've taken some labs and things over the last like 24, 48 hours. So we'll see what those come back with. But. Basically, it's just a waiting game. And it's hard because my perinatal specialist said that she anticipates that if I don't make it to the 37 week mark, it's going to be because, you know, something happens that makes us need to do a quick C-section. And that makes me nervous because like I'm in the safest place that I can be and I'm confident that they have everything under control. Like that's not the issue. It's more so just logistically right now, Josh cannot be with me 24 seven because of Liam. So he's here when he can be, but oh, I just feel like every fear that I've had in this pregnancy <laughs> has come to reality and I'm trying not to get into that mindset. I'm trying not to allow myself into that headspace because it's not healthy for me. But I just had this, my, my fear is that something could happen where they have to move me so quickly that he would miss her birth. And that would just break both of us. Like, I'm like trying not to get emotional about that right now. Um, it's hard um, being away from Liam because, like, you know, like he got dropped off at a play date the other day thinking that I was coming to pick him up in a couple hours. And so now, like, it's like mommy might not be back for weeks, and that's never happened. Um, and he understands, sort of, but not really. Just a waiting game. Just a waiting game. Good morning. I think it's still morning. <laughs> we are day five. Five, I think. I am still not sleeping. I have kind of just like 
not given up, but I have just accepted that I will sleep when I can sleep and I won't sleep when I can't sleep. Um, but we are having Josh bring my weighted blanket from home. So I'm hoping that will be helpful. I get to have a lunch date with him and Liam soon. So that's exciting. And we have coffee with my creamer. Josh did bring me Starbucks coffee grounds, but like, I don't know if I wanna be that person that makes Starbucks coffee grounds in the community coffee pot in case other people don't like it. Anyway, so for now we're gonna save those and I'm just using my own creamer for the community coffee. So I feel bad Josh has been running back and forth to the store to like bring me stuff pretty much every day and I feel bad. Um, yesterday though, he did so good. He brought me coloring book and twistable, twistable colored pencils. Love him for that. But I'm thinking about asking him to bring me a mug and a bowl or like, like a set. I don't know if that's, if that makes me a diva or not, but I'm just, like, we are very thankful for the coffee, but would I feel more homey if I had like a mug, maybe, instead of a styrofoam cup? I have a sink in here, like I can rinse stuff out. I don't know, maybe that makes me a diva. We'll see, anyway. So today's kind of um, a boring day. I don't have any appointments or anything. Yesterday they started me on steroids for her lungs just in case she comes early so I got the first round of that yesterday second round of that today honestly that wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be and now because we're so close I won't have to get another round of those so we have literally done everything we can at this point to protect her lung development so that's good but yeah so today I don't have any appointments today we've already done her fetal monitor she looks great and see what the rest of the day holds. It's gonna be kind of a relaxing day. Hey. Now we're doing a video, say hi. Hi. Liam, what did you bring mommy? I did some Chick-fil-A for you. You did bring Chick-fil-A for me. Huh. What are you eating? I eating some red fries. Some french fries. Mm. Mm -hmm. Can I have a kiss? Mm. Hey, I love you, Frenches. Mm -hmm. uh, Real MVP over here. As soon as I see you guys, please look at me. I got Chick fil A. Got me Chick fil A. We got to do all the things. All the things. All the things. I have your free guys. So here's what's weird about me and having this much fluid. I actually am tolerating it fairly well, all things considered except when I'm walking or standing for longer than a couple of minutes. So my doctors and nurses keep asking me like, are you short of breath, are you short of breath? And as long as I'm in here, like in the room resting, I'm really okay. And which they all seem kind of surprised about, but then I'm trying to stay as active as I can within a certain limit. So like I'll walk down to go meet Josh and Liam for lunch and stuff outside and rest, like sit on the benches and walk back up. But just that, like you can hear, like I have to, once I get back up here and lay down, I'm like, like struggling to take deep breaths and stuff. But as long as I'm, you know, especially first thing in the morning, I normally feel pretty good as far as that goes. And so I was telling Josh, it's hard sometimes, it's hard sometimes being in the hospital and feeling mostly fine when you're used to being at home, running around and doing your normal thing because you know, all of my labs have come back normal and like everything looks great. So it's like, could I go home? But I know this is the safest place for me to be and it's a good thing that I feel good. And I think what I'm learning is like, if I were to go home, 
I wouldn't be resting like this. I would still be pushing myself and I was probably pushing myself too much at home. And my body was trying to tell me like, stop, stop, stop. Nothing caused, like nothing I did caused my fluid to be this high, right? But when we were out for our anniversary, we weren't really doing a whole lot of walking or anything like that. Like we went and got manicure pedicures and walked around the shops a little bit, sat and ate dinner for a while, walked around a little bit more, went to the movie, and just me like getting up to walk to the bathroom in the middle of the movie was exhausting. And that was a week before I got admitted. And so I was telling my doctor, you know, I thought I was getting frustrated because I thought, okay, maybe this is just the stage of pregnancy. But then I remembered I worked up until, you know, three days before Liam was due, very active you know, working with patients, um, doing uh, hippotherapy once or twice a week with kids and didn't feel this exhausted. And so I think my point is, I think my body was trying to tell me for a week that I needed to be here. Even though I'm tolerating it better than like I'm tolerating my fluid levels better than I could be. That's a blessing that I need to be really thankful for. And I just need to keep reminding myself that this is the safest place for me to be. And I'm getting more rest and care, like close, close care uh, than I would anywhere else. And Josh keeps telling me that too, because um, if something were to happen at home, like my water were to break at home, it could be really dangerous for me and for Marsley. Um, so yeah, it's hard, but this is definitely the safest place for me to be. There he is. Man of the hour, what did you bring? What I did you bring? You. Coffee mug? Yes. And a weighted blanket. Oh, praise. You're such a saint. I'm trying. You're such a saint. And it's pink. And it's pink. You're so hot. Thank you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Thanks, love. <laughs> Alright, we have our weighted blanket. We took our unisom, showered to calm my body, and we're gonna try to sleep. All right, so day six. <laughs> Josh has been with me most of the morning, which has been nice. I slept. I slept more consistently last night than I have in, I mean, weeks. I think I had one night a couple weeks ago where I slept that much after I had all of my morning like meds and vitals and fetal monitor and everything. Um, I slept some more <laughs> while Josh has been working. Oh my gosh, I feel so much better. I thought I was supposed to have my recheck this morning, but I mean, we're kind of on like hospital times. Hi. Yes, you're doing okay. I'm good. I don't think you're gonna go today. Really? I could be wrong. No, 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 I mean, that's fine, but I guess. Is there any way for us to know, or are they just gonna kind when of- When she comes around and does rounding. Just ask her? Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fine. So I guess I'm not going today. <sighs> Okie dokie. <laughs> well, it's been a restful day. My body needed it, I mean, clearly. So I will say that we do feel a little bit better as far as plan for C-section in the event that I don't make it to 37 weeks. There's kind of a few scenarios that could play out. Worst case scenario, 
would be a stat like emergency c-section and that would be indicated if my water broke and I was hemorrhaging or if there was a cord prolapse which could happen and that's why I'm here because they can get me in and out very very quickly and if that were to happen regardless of whether Josh was physically here or not he wouldn't be in the OR with me that's that scenario that's like worst case scenario the best case scenario is obviously we make it to 37 weeks and we have the planned c-section and he can you know we have everybody in place to see about Liam and he's here and all of that but you know if we didn't and I did start to show signs of labor then it could still take a while to get me it could still take a while to get me back to an OR as long as she is stable in which case if Josh is not here I have time to say hey you know I am having contractions uh, make your way to the hospital and as long as she's stable we could still have a couple hours for him to get here which made me feel better the in-between scenario is I start going into labor and she starts showing signs of what they call intolerance so not necessarily distress in the sense that like the cord isn't prolapsed or I'm not bleeding like I'm not hemorrhaging but she's just not tolerating it and in that case they kind of declare like a 30 minute window to get the baby out but again I am keeping Josh updated so any signs of labor you know I have a text I can shoot to him like hey make your way to the hospital now so even in that kind of in-between scenario hopefully he would already even be here or on his way so we've got all the contingency plans in place we've got like the go text group <laughs> of people for Liam and we're just that's all we can do that's like you know we've got our plans in place got our people in place everybody's been super supportive and every day that I'm here and healthy is good every day that she is healthy is good and as long of a two weeks as it might be every day is a step closer to seeing her so and every day that she's here is good for her you know every day that she is in my belly as long as it's safe for her it's, it just means that she's developing more and growing more and getting stronger so hopefully I'll get checked tomorrow or Friday. Yeah, we'll see what the rest of the day holds. So my perinatal specialist came by to chat and check in after we had chatted about just general you know hey how you doing like here's the plan for the rest of the week she mentioned a complication with polyhydramnios that i had not really anticipated i guess i just nobody had really talked to us about it and that particular complication is that you know, with polyhydramnios, the uterus tends to distend, so stretch, and sometimes it has a difficult time reducing. So anytime a woman is pregnant, the uterus needs to contract after birth. They always, you know, check you. There's numerous reasons why, like your uterus needs to contract within a certain amount of time. With poly patients, they can have a more difficult time with that because the uterus has been so overextended. And with that if it were to be extremely difficult there are a lot of medications that we can do there's surgical things that can be done there's all sorts of interventions that can be done to help that process but in a worst 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 case scenario where it does not contract it can be dangerous for me and my life and my well-being and if that were the case, then they would have to do a hysterectomy. And I just was not 
prepared for that conversation. And Josh was with me, Josh was in the room. We haven't really talked about it much. So he's, he's coming, he's taking Liam to his mom's for the night and he's gonna stay with me for the night. We're gonna have dinner just in the room to discuss it and just be together. I feel a little bit better right now. I, the nurse came in and could tell that I was a little off. So we got her hooked up to the fetal monitor. She looks great, sounds great. So that honestly made me feel a lot better. But before that, I just, I've just spent most of the afternoon in here like crying and crying and crying. <sighs> I have cried and mourned so much like during this pregnancy. And that was one thing I was not prepared to have to think about. The possibility that I could lose that piece of myself. It's one thing to to go through a difficult pregnancy and to decide that, you know, we may not want to have any more kids, which, you know, that's been a conversation several times during this pregnancy is like, gosh, I don't know. Like, I don't know if we would ever want to go do this again, but it's one thing to say that and to talk about it and to make that decision as a couple. And then it's another thing. It's another thing to think about, oh, I could have that choice totally decided for me. And that's just, that's emotional to think about. It is a hundred percent a last ditch thing. Very, very worst case scenario kind of situation. And I'm not mad at the, I'm not mad at the specialist for bringing that up by any means. I'm, I, she, she needed to tell me. And I did feel better after I talked to my OB who came in later and she goes, truthfully, it's actually good that you are a poly patient who is getting a guaranteed C-section. There are more things that we can do right then and there once we get the baby out. She said, there's a lot of things that we can do while you're open on the table to help. So versus, you know, you doing a vaginal delivery and then us having to deal with it after the fact. It, like we've got a lot of things that we can do before that becomes the route that we go down. And so I, di I did feel better after talking to her, but oh, it just, That's heavy. Josh is bringing me some comfort food. We're gonna have pasta. So hopefully that'll make me feel better. What you doing? Shuffling. Shuffling? Shuffling, baby. How many times have you asked me to play Uno today? Lots and lots of times. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's just scared. Are you ready? I'm ready. You're ready for a been, riveting uh, game of Uno? Riveting. <laughs> been mentally preparing myself for victory and for potential defeat. Just playing both sides of the, uh, the spectrum. All right. Well, whenever I am unattached from this monitoring situation, I can play some Uno for a hot, hot date. Is my, uh, do my shuffling skills impress you? You know, so impressive. I mean, <laughs> that, that would get me going. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh man. Just smooth with it. You're so ridiculous. All right. Day seven. It's like I was here all day Friday, so I'm like counting last Friday as day one. <laughs> That's unreal. Josh stayed with me last night. It's very nice to just have him here and it's just always comforting when he's here. I slept so much better, like each night's getting better, which is great. I think I slept a full seven hours. What? When was the last time that happened? <laughs> I did have a fluid recheck this morning. After that, came back and slept again. I don't remember the last time I slept this much. 
Specialist check went well overall. We are still a little bit concerned about the possibility of a TE fistula because her stomach looked small again today. So it is fluctuating because like on Monday it looked okay and the specialist I saw that day was very encouraged and then today it looked small again. So we're wondering if it's a partial fistula, which could mean that even though she is swallowing and some fluid is getting in her stomach, it's not doing it as effectively as it could. My fluid today was higher than it was on Monday. So like on Friday, it was really high and her stomach looked really small. On Monday, my fluid was slightly lower, slightly, and her stomach looked really good. Today, her stomach looked small again and my fluid was really, really high. So there's really no way that we're gonna know until she gets here. I'm still super prayerful that maybe that is not the issue. If it is a problem, they can fix it after birth. There are, you know, solutions for that. We just, we won't know until she gets here. We will see what her neurosurgeon says about her ventricles whenever she gets here, because she's got, you know, they're really enlarged. We will see what the neurosurgeon says. We'll see what urology says, what cardio says. All of her team of specialists <laughs> will see her probably within 24 hours after she's born. Uh, she, she has a whole little team of people. Right now, the plan is still, again, 37 week delivery, C-section, like as long, unless she decides to come early. So that's that. Today has been kind of hard emotionally. I think just, it was hard when Josh left this morning because he left and as soon as he left, they came to get me for my specialist appointment. And we were like, seriously, <laughs> I hate going to step alone right now. It's just, I hate it, hate it, hate it but it just, it's part of it, right? It was just emotionally hard. I feel much better, much, much better after sleeping, after eating, I woke up, I was starving, starving. <laughs> Had a fabulous lunch, um, hospital chicken Caesar salad wrap. On point, probably one of my favorite things that I've had here so far. So honestly, I feel a little bit more uplifted after all of that. I do get to see Liam and Josh again today. So I'm excited. We're going to do a dinner together. I talked to Liam on the phone earlier and he seemed in really good spirits. So yeah. I'm trying so hard to find the little blessings. I, I want to allow myself to feel the things that I need to feel because it's important. So when I need to cry, I cry. When I need to be mad, I'm mad. When I need space, I need space. But I'm also trying to find the little joys. <sighs> I will probably do a separate vlog for the weekend. So I'll kind of close this one out. But yeah. One day at a time. That is our theme right now. That is our go-to theme. One day at a time.